for this morning comes from the first chapter of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of, as of a father's only son full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received, grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, it is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Please be seated while we sing the sprinkle all over through the Bible so you can't help but it. But I have a question. Why do we have the Bible? the answer. The answer comes right out of John 6 verse 44. Do you remember it? Gee, I, I didn't think so. I didn't. I don't remember it either. I know the, the gist. Matthew 
22nd chapter, beginning at the 34th verse. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. This is the greatest in the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love God, love your neighbor. That's his command. wasn't original with him. The first part, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, comes right out of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6.5, if you want to look it up. The second part comes out of Leviticus, very early in the Old Testament. Leviticus 19.18. He'd given it to Moses. And obviously it had to be reiterated. Well, I've been over this for years. How do you love God? Uh, I've got a real problem with the word. I don't think this society knows what the word love means. The English language has one word for love. Love. L-O-V-E. The Greeks have four words. Agape, storge, phileo, eros. They're all different. But they all mean love. When we talk about loving God, we're talking about agape. <clears throat> when we talk about loving your neighbor, we're talking about phileo. Philadelphia, brotherly love, the city of. Storge is the love that you have for your family. Eros is the love you have for your spouse. They're all different. So when Jesus said, love God, the word that is used in Greek is agape. What does it mean? About the only thing I can do is use an analogy. You love your spouse. How do you think about your spouse? Or don't you? <laughs> that my case, she's been gone for almost five and a half years. I still think about her. While she was here, she was first. Unfortunately, that's not the way it's supposed to be. But I lived my life for her. I did what I did because it would make a good life for her and her family. 
left on my own, I never would have been in graduate school or take a position in a professorship. Never. But what's for her? Agape. Love for God. Since that's the way we should be thinking about our Heavenly Father. Put him first. And you know what? He promises. You put me first. And I will make sure that you have everything you need. And your life will be prosperous. Not in terms of money, but spiritually prosperous. Hmm. the kid you hate the most. There were a few. She said, okay, what can you do to make his life better? Changed life, changed mine. I hope it changed his. I know it changed his wife's life greatly. Hmm. What about Storge? Love of family. Thank you, children. My, my wife always would tell the kids, this is 
going to hurt me more than it is you. And my son said, that's not true. So he did it a little bit harder. If you do it with the correction in mind, it comes from love. But not if you've got a chip on your shoulder. There's a few other little things that we should have a good look at. Jesus never did a sign that benefited himself. Never. His love and compassion is illustrated throughout the Gospels. He met a leper one day. And the leper said, Master, if you choose, you can make me clean. Do you remember what Jesus did? He said, I do choose. And he touched him. Leprosy is contagious by contact. I do choose to be made clean. And he was. Everything he did, he did for you. thousand years after he died. His life was lived that we might be granted eternal life. His life was also a model. Read the Gospels. Everything he did, he did out of love and compassion. Love your neighbor. He brought it to earth. He modeled it for us. Take heart to what he said, and I will read it. You've heard it a million times. John 3, 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.